Howdy! My name is Lisa Snyder. I'm the author of iPhoto 11, Photoshop CS5, and Photoshop CS6 Missing Manuals. I'm also the Chief Evangelist for iStockphoto.com, the world's most fabulous resource for royalty-free imagery, vector illustrations, video, and audio. In fact, iStockphoto has given me a special URL to share with you folks so you can download 10 free high-resolution images as well as get a 20% discount on credit purchases. If you want to take advantage of that special offer, try on over to lisa.in, that's l-e-s-a dot i-n slash iStock deal. In today's tutorial, I'd like to show you a quick and easy way to add a color tint to your image. It's a fabulous way to add a, an antique or aged vintage feel to your photo, a great way to save an image that you can't seem to color correct to your liking, or just to evoke a different emotional feel from the color change. We're going to create all this using a black and white adjustment layer. So here's our before and here's our after. So I'll go ahead and delete that layer by clicking to activate it and then pressing the delete key. Now on your own, once you've got a photo open, you can add a black and white adjustment layer in several different ways. One way is to trot up to the layer menu and choose new adjustment layer, then scoot over to the right and down and choose black and white. Creating this adjustment as an adjustment layer simply tells Photoshop to, hey, this next adjustment I'm going to make on my image, please do the adjustment on its very own layer. That gives you the ability to throw away the layer if you don't like the way it looks. You can lower the opacity of the layer for another unique effect. Uh, you can use the included layer mask that tags along with every adjustment layer to hide the effects of what you've done from the photo, the possibilities are endless. So let's go ahead and add our adjustment layer. And if you choose the layer menu method, then Photoshop asks what you'd like to name it. Let's go ahead and name this sepia tint. Sepia is a hoity-toity way to say brown tint. <laughs> Go ahead and click OK and Photoshop immediately adds the layer. You could also add a new adjustment layer by clicking the half black half white circle at the bottom of your layers panel and then choosing black and white from the resulting menu or you can open your adjustments panel that you have in CS5 or CS6 by choosing window adjustments and then from the resulting panel you can single click that third icon in the second row. So no matter which way you go about it, this is what's going to happen to your image. Photoshop is immediately going to add this black and white adjustment layer in your layers panel above your image layer. The properties panel in CS6 is also going to open with a set of sliders you can use to adjust the contrast in this what looks to be a black and white image that we're about to make a brown tinted image. If you're in CS5 or earlier, this panel is named Adjustments instead of Properties. Okay, so Properties is new in CS6. The next thing you want to do is turn on the tint checkbox and that's where the color tint magic comes from. Straight from the factory, Photoshop adds a brown tint, like I said, it's called a sepia, to your image because it's the most popular color tint to date. However, you're not stuck with the sepia tint. If you'd like to change the tint to anything else, single click that little brown swatch no need to double click it, just single click it, and that will open the color picker. From here you can tell Photoshop another range of colors to use for your color tint by using this rainbow color bar on the right hand side here. So for example, if I wanted to add a bluish tint to this photo instead, I could click inside the blue range, and then I could use this area to the left of that rainbow bar to tell Photoshop how light or how dark I want that blue to be. For example, if I want a really, really light blue, I could mouse up to the top left corner and click on something lighter. And as you do, Photoshop shows you what the color tint is going to look like over here in your image on the fly, which is very handy. If I wanted something darker, I could come down here. Possibilities are endless. So once you get it all like you want it, go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click Cancel because I like that, that brown tint. And if you want to adjust the contrast in the image, you can play with these sliders right here. These sliders will lighten or darken their respective colors. If you drag the slider to the left, it will darken the area where that color appears in your image. Or if you drag it to the right, it will lighten it. 
So let's call that done. You, of course, can experiment with those, with those sliders to your heart's content on your own images. And that's really all there is to it. Now, a couple of other things that you might be interested in doing. If you wanted to lower the opacity of this black and white adjustment layer set to a sepia tint, then you simply can uh, double click on the opacity adjustment or opacity slider rather field that's at the top of your layers panel. Type in another number to give you a partial color, partial sepia look. Or you can simply hover your mouse cursor or point your cursor to the label of that field, which says opacity. And when you do, it turns into a double-sided arrow. And you can click and drag to the left to decrease the opacity of that layer, or click and drag to the right to increase the opacity of that layer. So as you can see, it adds a really different feel to this image. Now I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like on a couple of different images. Images. This technique is also great for standardizing the color in a collage. So I'll toggle the visibility off on the layer I made for you. You can see this collage, the colors don't really match. But as soon as I add a black and white adjustment layer and turn on the sepia tint option, then the colors blend beautifully and I've got a nice collage going on. And last but not least, here's a photo of Elvis that you may have seen in a previous video. Here's our before, and here's the after. This one also has a dark edge vignette added to it via the lens correction filter, which also adds to the aged or vintage feel. So that's all there is to adding a color tint to your image. See you next time.